Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. If you're new, a warm welcome to you and if you're returning, an equally warm welcome to you. And if you find the analysis I do every week of use and thank you to all of those who comment on my videos, uh, positive and uh, uh, criticism and questions and I try to get back to everybody but just been really busy with the private mentor group um, thank you very much uh, for those comments and don't forget to like subscribe and share it with your fellow trading colleagues so um, getting into our trade process which we apply fundamental analysis to establish trade direction and then apply technical analysis to plan demand strategies to time trade entries establish profit targets and risk management that is the trading 180 approach so let's get into to this week's uh, news before we get into the charts and the week ahead. Um, all eyes turn to the US jobs report. Let me zoom in quickly and uh, due Friday, which will likely point to an acceleration in the labor market recovery while the earnings season continues with Berkshire Hathaway, General Motors, blah, 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 blah. I don't need to necessarily know about that. It's just about the currencies we're looking at. So definitely looking at the jobs report because the Fed are looking at the jobs report and jobs are a, um, a, a I guess, a leading indicator as to the um, economic health of a, of a country, right? So you have high employment, low unemployment, that means a, a growing economy. And if you have high unemployment and low employment, it means that you're in, um, you know, you're going the other way, right? You're going into potential uh, recession, um, you're contracting. So uh, worldwide PMI surveys, surveys will be in the spotlight as well as monetary policy action by central banks in the UK, Australia and India. So UK and Australia are the two that we really wanna focus on. Uh, other releases include trade figures for the US, Canada, and China, Japan's consumer morale, and that's pretty much it. So um, yeah, we've got a, um, a decent week. Um, don't know whether there's gonna be any fireworks. I think a lot of the uh, price, um, uh, or the news is kind of priced in. There shouldn't be necessarily any surprises, but let's see. You never really know with the markets uh, how they are going to react. So let's get into the technicals and some uh, deeper fundamentals, and let's start off on the dollar index and the dollar index is basically just a measure of dollar strength against a basket of currencies like the euro the pound the uh, yen and i think the australian dollar and what we've seen technically this week is uh, really a bit of a sell-off so the dollar was uh, strong prices did come down um sorry come up to this uh, this this overall supply zone uh, last couple of weeks and then we've pretty much just sold off from there we haven't had the greatest of news for the dollar um, in fact we did get some uh, US economy and it says US US economy back on top right second quarter growth of 6.5 uh, percent while disappointing right so it, it was definitely disappointing because I think they were expecting um, I think about 8.5 percent or something like that um, so it came out two percentage points uh, lower uh, but it means that the US economy has now recovered all of the lost pandemic output and marks another key milestone in the recovery. So there's a positive spin, I guess, a positive narrative on um, some uh, disappointing data. Uh, so the next target, given all the stimulus sloshing around, is to end the year with, a, with an economy larger in size than would have been the case had the pandemic not struck. So there's um, there's uh, the positive spin right there. There are things that are holding back the economy, but um, what the ING is, is basically uh, talking about is they have a certain um, uh, 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 forecast, right? And although um, the, the most recent GDP uh, data came out as beyond uh, where they expected the um, uh, GDP to be, uh, the market is always forward thinking. So uh, the, the, the path is still projected to actually be higher and in fact higher than had the um, uh, uh, the uh, COVID uh, not had happened last year. So that's astonishing if it does if it does uh, do that. But um, yeah, so this week it was a bit of a mixed reaction. There was a bit of a sell-off, but 
um, prices have kind of bounced from here. Um, I'm a bit neutral on the dollar, to be fair. Um, I think as the, the, the Fed being still being a bit, uh, uh, I wouldn't say hawkish, but less hawkish. Um, and talking about tapering is obviously positive for the dollar. But the data has to support the narrative. So, you know, you have to have jobs. Jobs is a must, right? Employment um, is going to be what the, uh, the the Fed are looking at. And if you don't have jobs um, and, and employment, um, then the Fed pretty much are not going to high crates uh, or it's less likely that they will even in the face of rising inflation so because they don't know whether uh, rate hikes uh, or the economy can support rate hikes so um, at the moment as long as the data supports the narrative as far as uh, 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 higher employment lower unemployment you should see prices you know potentially be supported in and around this area and as we're looking at the uh, dollar index um, if you know you, you see uh, the dollar index start to um, gather some pace then what you want to do is look for buy opportunities on the dollar against other dollar pairs for example like the uh, the yen the Swiss or the Canadian dollar for example um, so we just use the dollar index as um, as confluence really so if you do want to sell and do want to get short then your nearest uh, supply zone really is going to be at this uh, 92 area uh, before looking at getting short in and around here but again you definitely need like some sort of catalyst so we could be uh, entering into a bit of a range yeah uh, at the moment um, and then look for potential higher highs again if the Fed are continuing to potentially or the rumor is that they're hiking rates and hiking rates um, generally has a uh, an appreciative effect on currencies so uh, moving on to the uh, dollar yen and the dollar yen a bit mixed this week um, again there was some, some risk off sentiment coming into the market uh, some news around China um, so uh, yeah we've, we've had a bit of a sell-off but um, I think overall we did get a, actually a bounce where I kind of said last week there would be so you had prices you know bounce up but then that level didn't hold within that larger demand zone and then we've had prices kind of come back but I think again the path of least resistance if you're looking at long dollar um, is to the upside so it is literally just looking for prices to potentially come back down me prefer, I'd prefer the lower area of that zone or even a zone just below here before getting long I will tidy this up though uh, to probably where we are now I think that level's probably gone so any kind of pullbacks into this 109 uh, round number just just before that would be a decent buy even though this level has been touched several times to be fair so if it has been touched it is obvious and an obvious level tends to want to be manipulated stop hunted etc so in fact um, for those of you who are in a private group watching this um, you may see a manipulation below that level and if prices come back inside then you want to potentially get long if you are looking at buying the dollar against the yen of course in a risk off environment yeah if risk comes starts to really kind of come off then the Japanese yen does strengthen um, so then all bets are pretty much off for me, probably the best level uh, would be somewhere around this 108, uh, 100, yeah, 108 round number to 107.50, as that's a nice fresh area of demand. This level's also been touched a couple of times. The more touch times the level is touched, is the more common it becomes, and it doesn't it doesn't become a bargain for the financial institutions. So um, because they bought here and they bought here, and now all the retail traders are looking to buy, and when retail are buying, uh, the financial institutions are not trying to buy with uh, the, us common folk right us technical traders so they manipulate areas obvious levels and uh, so that's probably likely to break depending on um, obviously risk sentiment and whether they consider this to be a bargain but if you want to get short then uh, you know you're pretty looking at this level right here there is a bit of supply right there just above there supply at lower highs and lower lows yeah, or in this area, it's a low. So you got a low. Oh, get my pen tool. Right, so you got a low, you got a high, and then you got a low. Right, and lower highs and lower lows are where 
the best supply zones potentially are. Moving on to the dollar Swiss and dollar Swiss. Um, we did have a bit of a demand zone here, but price, I think it was on the, um, it was the, uh, what was it again? It was on Wednesday, so that was uh, FOMC. Um, you know, pretty much the news uh, uh, put a, a stop to that demand zone. There wasn't any de really demand for the dollar. Um, I do like this zone further down this 90 uh, cent area just below that so that that fresh area of demand right there is really nice i think you also have a uh, a nice uh, area of support and resistance yeah, so support and resistance there so you've got a lot of viables on that level with a fresh area of demand so if prices do come down a bit more the dollar starts to weaken comes down there i think that's a decent area to look for some long uh, dollar trades if you are long dollar if you are short dollar then the nearest supply zone is going to be all the way up here at this 91 90 level so again uh swiss franc uh, benefit benefiting from a potential risk off environment yeah so risk off and the swiss franc strengthens which is basically what you're seeing here and the dollar didn't have the greatest of news with regards to the um uh, gdp but i do think uh in the long term you should see uh some dollar strength again depending on whether the data supports the narrative uh dollar cad dollar cad uh, price is coming down. I think the CAD, uh, there's been a lot of uh, forecasts talking about end of third quarter prices should be somewhere down at the 120s. So there's still a good three, 400 pips uh, potentially to the downside. Uh, the CAD, are, the Bank of Canada are one of the, uh, and, and the Canadian economy are doing uh, really well when it comes to, uh, well, say really well, but they're doing uh, better than most when it comes to um, uh, monetary policy so what you have now is um uh, they're ahead of the, uh, the 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 u.s economy put it that way so if you get a pullback to any of these levels that will be decent shorting opportunities i do like um the level just above that one there so that would be where i'm looking at as far as uh, any kind of short trades there is another mini level just below there and uh, anywhere within here, a nice fresh area of supply. So um, let's see what happens with the uh, with the dollar CAD. Again, two uh, pretty even, uh, two potentially strong currencies. Actually, I would probably say the dollar is probably something like this, whereas the CAD is more um, uh, appreciating uh, potentially. It depends again on the risk environment, as the uh, the dollar can act as a risk off currency and appreciates in a risk off environment so if we are in a risk off environment or you see some risk off sentiment come into play then the dollar will actually uh, tend to strengthen over the canadian dollar so you could see some more upside potential but risk sentiment just drives prices to where you want to be potential a potential buyer uh, and it's in, in this case i would probably prefer the canadian dollar over the us dollar so um Let's see what happens with that. Uh, New Zealand uh, dollar, US dollar currency pair, and uh, the New Zealand dollar has surprisingly been selling off. And again, just from uh, the perspective of um, uh, more risk off environment, I guess the, 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 the US dollar does uh, tend to do well. But um, again, there are uh, bank forecasts that's forecasting 72 uh third quarter and i think it's like 74 in the uh by the fourth quarter so we've got lots of upside potential depending on what happens the new zealand dollar the, the rbnz the reserve bank of new zealand are actually expected to hike rates first amongst the um the, the major currencies that we trade so if anything this looks like an absolute bargain at these prices and if they do manage to hike uh first then um you know potential upside that's the really the path for least resistance they're ahead of the, the the united states dollar in terms of monetary policy um and uh, economic growth so uh, yeah their central bank is pretty much signaling that um the new zealand dollar should want to hike rates if not uh, next month august then um i say next month um by the time you're watching this i'm recording this on 
the, the 31st um, but if you watch this uh, if you're watching this on the 1st of August then yeah it, they're, they're looking to the RPNZ are looking to um, hike on the uh, in, in August so again um, that should be appreciative of the New Zealand dollar right and uh, yeah we should see some upside potential I'm not saying it's going to go straight up from here it could go to the downside depends also I think there is some news around um, jobs and employment so as long as that stays good for the uh, New Zealand dollar then the likelihood the data is supporting the narrative of a rate hike and you should see prices move to the upside or that's, that should be the path of least resistance anyways moving on to the pound dollar pound dollar and the pound has been quite a surprising um, and actually matter of fact not necessarily surprising per se um, but it's been um, a, a bit of a dark horse when it comes to um, the uh, uh, buy the buying uh, pressure that comes that's coming in and demand I guess that's coming in for the dollar and um, it's really because uh, they're handling the COVID um, uh, crisis I guess better than most, not necessarily the best, but um, there was some recent data that was talking about um, how uh, even though cases are rising, the death toll is not. So people are not really dying from COVID as much as um, they were last year, even though um, cases are spiking or were spiking. So there's a positive um, element to the um, uh, to, to, to the data which in turn is basically causing the pound to really kind of strengthen right so we've got uh, we've got demand there got some demand zoom in a bit got some demand there and where's my pencil there we go All right so demand cut through that supply zone so again I, I always say this is that there's if, if um, there's no technical analysis level that's going to stand in the way of um, of value yeah and if the markets uh, fundamentally believe that you know there's no value here at a technical level then they won't be right the market has to believe that there is and we just use technical analysis to see what the markets was doing in the past and if there's possible um, value there but also as well we have to know which uh, currency to buy and you can never know which currency uh, to, to really kind of buy or the, or the probabilities unless you understand fundamental and sentiment analysis because that will tell you where money typically is flowing so um, I think at the moment if you're looking for a pullback and are waiting to buy the pound you're looking at either a big pullback down into here or a higher high and then a pullback into a demand zone that's pretty much uh, your your buyers if you are looking to buy the dollar now is pretty much or you know, that supply zone was um was your chance if you get a pullback into that supply zone and then a bit of a sell-off then that's pretty much where you are uh, there is uh, the bank of england uh, meeting on the thursday so in uh, the recent rising covid uncertainty means we're unlikely to see a hawkish turn from the bank of england on thursday we expect uh, policymakers to avoid offering any new hints on when the first rate hike may come but we also uh, doubt we'll get at the early end of QE that some Bank of England hawks have recently proposed. So um, end of QE um, or at least tapering is generally positive for um, a currency and tends to appreciate uh, the currency. But um, again, in short, in the article is talking about they don't expect a hawkish shift in August anyway. It might in September um, or October, but it depends on obviously what happens with regards to uh, the spread of COVID. So expect some fairly upbeat forecasts. So upbeat forecasts meaning that growth uh, and uh, jobs. Uh, we don't expect any further hints about future rate hikes or no early end to QE, but um how about some hints on balance sheet reduction and rates uh, are highly skeptical so a bit neutral but again the the, the bank of england are um ahead uh, further ahead than most when it comes to uh um tapering and uh, potential hiking rates on monetary policy so let's see what happens uh with uh with that currency pair um, for me, not really, uh, not not really the best pair to look for for trade trades, and I'd rather look for the pound against something like the Swiss franc or the Japanese yen. Um, 
moving on to the euro dollar and the euro dollar again um uh, the euro uh did have some positive news at the end of the week it was first of all eurozone inflation rises to 2.2 so that puts a little bit of pressure on the ecb to potentially now look to want to high crates um or at least start the ball rolling on and 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 uh, more hawkish language because they are very dovish at the moment when it comes to um hiking rates and also as well uh, there was uh, the eurozone rebounds from recession more strongly than expected so that's definitely uh, positive so the data is potentially supporting a narrative now it's about the ecb um the european central bank um now potentially signaling to the market that they may want to start to high rates and i think that if they do if they do then i think again the path of least resistance is to the upside i think the um the 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 euro has a lot of upside potential um um especially over the dollar so um, let's see what happens in in the near future. It wouldn't be if it, it, it bit risky to be fair at the moment, as again you know I guess we're uh, we're always taking risks in the market. But right now it's about a timing issue, and I think um, although the euro against the dollar, if you're buying the euro, I don't think the dollar might will be necessarily the best uh, currency to trade against uh, um, the euro. But um, uh, I do think the euro potentially now could start signaling a buy. So looking for weaker currencies like, for example, the yen or the Swiss franc against the, uh, the euro. But again, as long as risk remains on, yeah, and the data must support the narrative. There must be positive data, employment, growth, um, COVID vaccine rollout. Um, deaths, you know, the spread of the vaccine um, um, coming um, under, you know, being contained, and then you should probably expect to see a stronger euro. But if you do want to get short at the moment as well, nice zone for you to get short in. Um, and I think that is decent, matter of fact, a really nice fresh, well, fresh, been touched once, so not necessarily the freshest area of supply, but. Um, it's kind of broken through and kind of come back so i think that actually might be decent for a short trade as long as again i think the um the uh the us uh the us dollar jobs comes out on friday i think non-farm payrolls comes out on friday and that is positive for the dollar so potential more downside but i think downside would be limited to maybe the 117 area is 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 the uh, is the forecast i think for the third quarter euro yen so the euro yen um again uh the euro actually was quite resilient against the 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 yen um in a risk-off environment we had a bit of risk off this week and um yeah so uh, i think that we could see some uh, potential upside again knowing that the data for the euro uh, is, is potentially positive and if risks risk is more on than off yeah then this should want to continue drifting higher um i think any pullbacks into any demand zones and i'm going to draw this demand zone probably from around i'll draw it here it's not necessarily the best way to draw demand but i'll keep it there anyway um i do think that this area this uh, just below this one two nine one two eight eight seven area is quite nice for a potential buy, um, or in fact, I think anything below here, yeah, I think that level there is decent as well. So yeah, I think any of uh, this area here would be nice for a potential um, a potential buy trade for the euro if it does come back here um if you do want to get short on the uh, euro yen again you'd have to really see the uh the the, the risk off uh, come into play um or the the, the i guess uh, some sort of bad news for you for europe then there is a potential short at this uh, supply zone moving on to the aussie dollar and the aussie dollar we've got some australian news this week uh, the rba um is really um uh, might 
or is likely to postpone uh, looking at um, tapering and, and potential rate hikes. And this is due to the, um, the lockdowns of a couple of major cities in Australia. Also as well, they have a really poor uptake in the vaccine. Uh, I think we read, I think I read somewhere it was something like 17 or 18 percent of the population had been vaccinated. And so um, uh, it doesn't help with GDP. And there's also fears that they could they could go into um, uh, uh, negative growth because of the uh, the lockdowns. So let's see what happens. So the, so basically, long long and short of it is that the, the Reserve Bank of Australia are um, are potentially um, uh, less hawkish or more dovish, and so what that means potentially is more downside, right? So more more downside um, when it comes to the um, the, uh, the the Australian dollar. So not great. Also depends on uh, commodity prices, iron ore and copper as well, even though that might be supportive. But um, I think monetary policy wise, the US is actually ahead of the uh, the Australian dollar. But if you do want to be a uh, buyer of the Australian dollar, you're looking for probably pullbacks to demand. You have a bit of a demand zone right here. Um, and then, so anywhere in and around a 73 round number, if you want to be a buyer of the dollar, then you're looking for either a pullback into that supply zone or for prices to make lower lows. And then you're looking for a pullback into that zone there because this is where your supply zone would be around there, like that. Um, moving on to the Aussie yen. And again, you're seeing the Aussie start to, again, sell off against the yen. The yen isn't doing great at all. And even though, um, I think the uh, Japanese yen is also um, struggling with COVID. It seems like money still just flows into the safe haven asset anyway, the Japanese yen. So, um, um, yeah, it's, it's pretty much just looking for potential um, uh, sell trades if you are interested in trading risk off. So you've got supply there. And you've also got... Yeah, technically you've got supply right there as well. So again, I think the, the, the top level would be the one that I'd be looking for because that's the level that if you look at where there'll be other traders looking at, not just su supply and demand traders, but you've got support, daily support and resistance there as well. So there's a lot of liquidity, you know, resting around this area here. So that would be potentially where you want to get short. If you're looking for long trades, again, probably around this 80 cent round number. It bounced off of here already so that's decent for a potential buy trade if risk uh, sentiment turns around and finally looking at gold and gold um there should have been a supply zone right here i don't know why it's not there um so yeah you've got supply and prices literally came up to here this supply zone and is sold off now gold saw an article just before i started recording this video and uh, central banks go big on gold buying in quest for security. So just um, from this, it's just a single paragraph. It says central bankers appetite for gold is growing, providing a bright spot for the traditional haven as investors investor interest ebbs. Global reserves expand 39% uh, higher than uh, higher than the, than the five year average for the period, according to quarterly summary. Um, and if central banks continue, this is a key, right? So if central banks continue to buy at the level seen recently, it will provide a supportive element for the market, according to Louis Street, senior market analyst um, at the council. And uh, central banks aren't are, are, are some of the smartest people in the room. So when you see that they're buying gold, they're they're thinking, you know, uh, uh, three, six, nine, twelve months. Uh, to you know two years ahead right so what would make gold really want to continue going higher right well there's two things higher inflation right because inflation is is really de devaluation of a currency it's devalue yeah of a currency and uh, gold is a hedge against in, uh, against inflation against devaluation and um, also as well if the dollar you know doesn't doesn't do well so if gdp uh, you know there's um there's there's um 
uh, higher unemployment and lower employment, right? So if non-farm payrolls fails to deliver and employment is still low, for example, that is definitely a catalyst for buying the dollar, right? That's because the Federal Reserve will have to, we can't really uh, look to appreciate the currency because again, as mentioned before, you need to have a growing economy. The economy needs to be able to support rate hikes. You can't raise rates, borrowing costs, loans um, on businesses when they are still struggling. So, um, and you know, uh, homeowners as well, right? You don't want to raise rates on homeowners because otherwise if they got to pay more back on their mortgage loans, then um, then it hurts obviously the pockets of homeowners and then um, homeowners, you know, won't spend in the economy they're looking to save. And then, you know, it's, a, it's basically a spiral, right? So you have to have a growing economy in order to facilitate um, uh, uh, rate hikes. So if you start to see that combination of um, employment um, go lower and inflation go higher, then gold is going to be the buy. Anyways, guys, um, I hope that helps. And if you find my, again, uh, analysis useful, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share and the thumbs up. It really helps get the, uh, the, the video out there and it's quality content. Anyways, guys, take care and uh, I hope you have a great trading week.